Hey, good day to you. Welcome back. Pull up a chair and stay a while, will you? Well, I have a tiny little piece of paper. This is actually one of these papers that are used in a Rolodex. It has the two little punched square holes, right? It's kind of fun to have like Rolodexes or other little things where you can type notes or addresses or contacts or whatever. Or like maybe you like to use tiny little pieces of paper to write like business cards, ad hoc kind of little things on tiny little pieces of paper. Well, if you've tried to do this, you know that it's a challenge sometimes fitting it into the typewriter and getting it to hold itself in place while you type it because typewriters are really ideally suited for full-size let's say letter size sheets of paper well if you've watched any of the classic typewriter instruction videos out there that are available on YouTube you'll know that there's a lot of instructional uh, typing videos that talk about making a special little sheet of paper to help you type on small pieces of paper. And I have such a piece of paper right here that I made. It uses kind of what I call a zigzag fold down the middle of the paper. And we're going to use that to hold tiny little pieces of paper into it so that we can roll the whole thing into a typewriter and type on it without any problems with the paper slipping and all that. I thought it would be fun to show you how you fold the piece of paper and then we're going to try this out on different typewriters. Full size manual typewriters, electric typewriters, the Selectric, tiny little ultra portable typewriters and see how universal this method works for making these tiny little piece of papers a practical material to type on. Stay tuned. So we have a letter size sheet of paper here. This is sort of a tan colored paper, which is a nice contrast with the normal white colored paper we might use. This is a 24 pound paper. I'm gonna fold it up, make sure the corners are straight with each other and square. And I'm gonna fold it in half, neatly crease it like that. Now I'm gonna fold this down and I'm gonna make a quarter inch roughly, let's say a five millimeters approximately. Whether you're in the North American or European time zones, it doesn't matter, but roughly a quarter inch, let's say, fold like that. And we have this kind of a zigzag fold, right? That we're gonna tuck our little pieces of paper into. Okay, so I have my folded piece of paper, my zigzag fold here, and I have a Rolodex card. Now, when you feed it in and the fold comes around, you'll notice that the fold is not really folded anymore. You want to bring it up above the rollers, the bale rollers. Make sure the fold is intact now. And then I'm going to tuck the card into this fold, center my rollers over the card. Now I can back roll this piece of paper and let's do a character turn. Set my margin. Okay, very good. All right, look at that. It feeds right out there and there's no problems with the card slipping or anything like that. The margins are nice and straight. The card is straight. I can put information wherever I want, top to bottom. I can even basically almost type down into the holes because the way the fold works on this particular card, the height of the hole punched holes is a little bit taller, just slightly, maybe about the same as the height of the fold itself. So I can get down really close to those punched holes. And this is gonna work really well for not only Rolodex cards, but also any other small piece of paper like business cards or whatever. It looks like it works really good for the Selectric, but what we wanna do is try it out on a bunch of different manual typewriters also, especially the smaller ones that have problems with holding cards in place. All right, I have the Royal Mercury now, and this is a nice little ultra portable typewriter, and this one has all new rubber platen, new rollers, so it'll be fun to try it on. Underneath the paper bale, there's the fold. So now I want to fold the paper, and there's the tuck right here. There are my guides, my holes center them. So this paper I'm using is 24 pound paper and 
It's possible that it may be a little stiff, so for small typewriters we may have to use actually a smaller. We don't know. We'll try it here. Okay, it's feeding. Looks pretty good. All right, let's try something. And there we are. Now we're at the tuck. And if I was going to be really quick about it, I can back roll it and back roll it and looky there. So there I am. I can type up a full card of information. That I was one and a half spacing for most of this, and I went down to one line spacing at the end. This is really cool. It really does work quite well, even on a small typewriter like the Roll of Mercury. But hey, I have other small typewriters to try too. Well, here we are with the little Groma Calibri, a wonderful little machine, but it has a pretty tiny platen, and the rollers on the paper bale are really small also. So it'll be fun to see how this one works. So again, we're going to take our zigzag folded paper, roll it into the machine. Roll it up to where the fold is. We're going to back roll the fold, or back fold it, so that it's creased like it should be. I'm going to grab me another Rolodex note, center it up in there. I'll have to put it underneath the bale. Lower the bale down. And uh, there we go. Du -du -du -du. I don't think I folded the uh, crease quite square with the paper, but hey, it's not perfect, but I think it should work here. Okay. A few typos, because I'm being very sloppy, but hey, look at that. It works really well. It keeps the paper nice and straight. I can type all the way up to the top of the card, all the way down to the holes, or even further almost. I like it. Very cool. Well, this is not the only typewriter I have. I have more yet to try out in my collection. Let's do it. Well, here's the Smith Krona Silent Super. This is one of my favorite typewriters. Okay. So, by the way, if you haven't noticed, you have a zigzag on both sides, by the way. It's double-sided. That's right, it is doesn't really quite matter. So this typewriter has the paper fingers on the sides. We will feed the fold in through there, up above, and then we will re-fold it. Just make sure you... this paper finger is giving us a little trouble here. Okay. Back roll it so the crease is right there. Let's get another contact information. I'm going to use just the back side of the IBM Selectric one. Going to slip it right in there. Fold. Back roll it. Yes. We will center up our rollers. How cool is that? All right, like that. Now we can go right over to where we want to start at, right here. Yes, we can keep going. Okay. Single-spaced, elite typeface. That works really well. Nice straight line, doesn't slip. You can type all the way to the bottom. I think there's one other machine that I'd like to try that will be probably a real challenge, and that is, yes, the NJ Roy. Well, okay, let's fold up or fold out to deploy the MJ Roy. Fold it over like that. Okay, fold up the little arm. I have not used this typewriter in a while, so we'll see. This will be a challenge because it generally doesn't really like super thick paper because the platen is hard and it's so skinny. So let's see if we can roll this stuff in here. So I'm just going to release the paper feed and try to get the paper through here first of all. There we go. Okay, it looks fairly straight. So let's feed, if we can, feed it up to the crease. This might prove to be 
not doable. We'll see. So there is my fold, nice and folded. So slip it in there in the tuck. Okay, it looks like it's slipping a little bit, so we might have some line spacing issues. So this is not a panacea for all typewriters. It looks like it's not feeding very good. Well, okay, so I've made another zigzag paper out of a piece of really thin typing paper. Let's see if the MJ Roy likes that a little better. I know this machine is almost unusable because the rollers are so hard and the platen is so skinny and also the springs on the feed rollers are kind of weak. Sort of a worst case scenario here. Let's see. There's our fold. Okay, the tuck is right there. Let's back it off. Okay, here is our Rolodex. Let's see if this will... Hey, hey, oops, no, it's not liking... Oh, uh, maybe, we'll see. Looks like it's doing a little better. Okay, let's see what happens here. So let's see, see it won't go any further at this point. That's as far as it goes. So it looks like the MJ Roy, you can get maybe the top half of it. And you'll also probably get some uh, mistypings because of the Azerty keyboard if you're not paying attention. Lines look a little irregular, so I think uh, this method works on just about any other kind of typewriter, except for these really skinny platen ones with super hard platens and feed rollers. Well, of course, full-size machines were used back in the days when those instructional typing films were created. And the full-size typewriters like the KMM and its ilk had card guides. So the question is, why do you need to use this paper tuck method when you have a full-size machine with card guides or card holders? Let's find out. Well, the KMMs have these card holders that you can push out of the way with these two knobs and then you can fold them up into position and they don't actually rub against the platen there is a little bit of clearance back there so when you put a card like one of these Rolodex cards in there it's really just the spring tension of the paper bale itself that's holding it in place because your feed rollers are underneath the platen now, there is this front scale, and you might be able to tell, maybe you can't, there you go, that the paper is actually not tucked in behind this scale. And to do that, then you would actually have to feed the card into the platen and come around like this. And I guess the idea is these fingers keep the paper from pushing forward. If, it, if the paper tilts forward, you're going to get a bad imprint. Uh, but let's see, first of all, if this, how this works. Okay, let's see. And let's move our our margin while we're at it. Okay, so far so good. So far, so good, but of course, keep in mind right now, the paper bale rollers are not holding the, the card in place. It's really the feed rollers or maybe even just the tension of the, of the narrow gap of this front scale holding it in place. And it looks like, sure enough, we can type using the KMM's own features without the piece of paper. But your full-size typewriter may or may not perform the same way depending on where the feed rollers are and how tight this scale is between the scale and the platen. So you may have to use the paper tuck method. Now, I think for the sake of completeness, we should probably try this with a thermal typewriter. So this is the Canon Typestar 220. The battery should be fresh, hopefully. And uh, I have a sheet of this letter size Brother thermal paper and I'm going to butcher the sheet. <laughs> and cut off a sort of random sized, almost business card, not really re very regular, size sheet of paper. And then we're going to use our thinner uh, paper for this experiment. Get it fairly even. Okay. Now the trick will be the tuck. Here's the, the crease. 
doesn't have a round platen. That's the challenge here. I'm going to slip it right here and let's do that. Actually, you know what? Let's move it a little bit to the right so I can make the margin a little bit to the left. Okay, so there we go, right there. I'm going to go into the direct print mode or the character print mode. So I have to figure out that's the mode C. Okay, so now let's see what happens here. And there it is. It looks pretty good. Other than I didn't set my right margin there. But hey, I think you can do this with a thermal typewriter as well and a thin sheet of creased paper. Oh, but of course, you know, once you do that, you're going to have to put it into the, to the punch here and uh, make it into a Rolodex entry, of course. Yes. <laughs> Well, it looks like the method works pretty well, except for those typewriters with really skinny platen rollers and hard rubber, because you have three layers of paper in that little tuck fold. So for those kinds of typewriters that are having little slippage problems, you want to use the thinner paper. But this thicker paper worked on most of the others. Uh, they pretty good, though. I really do like uh, the ease with which you can uh, type on these small pieces of paper and not worry at all about having the the paper slip and not being able to feed it all the way down or all the way up or whatever, it makes it really convenient. So I think for me, I'm going to probably keep these two sheets of paper lying around in my typing area and I can use these and probably put one in my typewriter bag so when I go out with a typewriter I'll have it. And also, you know, if I of course forget to bring the tucked piece of paper, it's no problem just folding up another one out of a sheet of typing paper, right? So you can get your Rolodex filled up with your contact information or however you like to use little slips of paper. I think it's really cool. Well, if this helped you guys, gave you some ideas for how to be creative with tiny pieces of paper, uh, that's great. And I think the lesson also for us is that those old typing instruction films from back way back in the first half in the middle of the 20th century, those things are really valuable. There's some really good ideas there. So you guys might want to go to YouTube and check some of those films out. But in the meantime, I wish you well. I wish you the very best that you would stay creative with your typewriters. And until next time, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.